so today we are in the town of Roslyn, which is a little town just about seven miles um, south-ish of central Edinburgh. And it is famous for the Roslyn Chapel, which is a 15th century chapel known for its very intricate and masterful carvery of stone, whatever you call it, stone masonry. Um, so it's got these intricate designs in stone. Um, and it is a beautiful chapel, but at the same time, it is famous worldwide for making an appearance in the Da Vinci Code, both the book and the movie, which conspiracy theories claim that, you know, the Masons and other um, secret societies gathered there or were associated with it. Uh, that doesn't seem to have any historical backing, but it makes it all the more interesting. I've never been here. We're here today. The weather is not great. Welcome to Scottish summer. But this little village so far is very serene, very pretty. All the stone houses are very charming. And yeah, we're just here, hopped on the bus in the city center. And within about 40 minutes, you're down here. And we're going to take a short walk just that down that road behind me to see the chapel itself. So just take a look at this beautiful little town with all its nice little cafes and little stone houses. It looks very serene and peaceful. And let's go see what we can find. Oh, I think I can see it there. It's actually close. When you get off the bus, it's right here. Uh, we had a little whiskey, <laughs> a little single malt on the way here, just to warm us up. It's, it's uh, oh yeah empty bottle there you go uh glen spark <laughs> so i don't know jesus it was nice it was nice it's whiskey how bad can it be wow it's so nice foggy but very charming it really goes with the vibe of this little town kind of medieval looking and uh the fog and stuff i don't like the humidity because it, it gets you quite cold but I, I think that's it there with the unfortunate scaffolding. I mean, it's understandable that the, all the old buildings and churches and stuff have to be renovated, but it's unfortunate for when you go to see it once in your life and it's co covered in scaffolding, but so you're not allowed to film inside under a penalty of being kicked out. Um, but we'll see what we can do for you guys. Mm. First, we'll just have a look just to make sure that we can get our money's worth because apparently it costs nine pounds to get in there which is a little bit steep and then we'll try to maybe on the down low film some footage and if we get kicked out then so be it let's see how discreet we can be so i don't know did they actually film the da vinci code here i wonder if it was like a real filming location probably i think so i think um tom hanks actually is here i will see if we can compare the footage from the Da Vinci Code movie uh, with this and see if it's real or not. Uh, oh, oh no. Advanced online booking and timed entry only. Well, that should be interesting. Yeah, so apparently, I, I think because of COVID, it says that you have to book online in advance to make sure that there's space, but says here that they may still have tickets for us so hope for the best I think it's fine it's the middle of the week one minute 37 seconds later all right so what's happening now is we got a ticket but our spot slot doesn't start until half an hour from now um, obviously for COVID reasons they have to have groups of a certain size the cool thing is you get an hour and a half in there in in the whole area so you have plenty of time to have a look and and admire and do whatever and not film <laughs> um and the cool thing is i just want to mention so because this is a charity organization that runs this whole thing you can actually if you're a full taxpayer you can actually give part of your income tax to them to claim back from the government on your behalf to help them with the restoration and things like that which is awesome because it doesn't affect you in any way if you pay tax if you are part-time or retired obviously no because that's gonna cost you but um okay so like now we're obviously gonna head to the pub so there we go we're at the pub awaiting our slot at the church chapel and the kind of main square here in the village 
um, unfortunately because of the I'm sorry kind of stupid rule that you can eat and drink no, like non-alcoholic beverages inside the warm pub and you have to sit outside like a dog in the cold drinking your alcohol I don't know if that's a dig at alcoholics like myself <laughs> no but seriously it's a bit of punishment because you want to have your drink to warm you up but you have to sit outside with this blanket and stuff it's not very cozy but I don't understand why the nature of the drink you're drinking changes the likelihood of you transmitting COVID. It's a bit weird. But I guess drunk people tend to be a bit more careless, so maybe that's that. I don't know. Anyway, so we're having the most beautiful whiskey you can ever find, Lafroy. Especially if you're a fan of smoky PT whiskey, Isla style. The glass is obviously misrepresenting because it's a Highland one, but this is Lafroy, my dears. And we will just have a little nip of it just now. Cheers. Oh, that is heaven. A double drink in Poland, in Germany, in Slovakia is 100 milliliters, which is quite a lot. Here, a double drink is 50 milliliters. So, like a single is 25 ml, which is literally like a this much <laughs> like nothing so bear that in mind if you're traveling from abroad and you're coming here and you're ordering like lots of double drinks so it's gonna cost you a lot but you're not gonna get a lot for your money in a pub so Yeah, so there's there's lots of obviously intricate carvings like I said on the inside it's supposed to be so much more impressive but I think the outside is absolutely amazing the the detail and the intricacy of the work is impressive and you're supposed to find from this spot some of these like the cherubs playing musical instruments which I suspect is this guy I'm not sure about that there's some guy holding a dragon or something so we've just basically been in the courtyard for just a couple of minutes, but it is everything and beyond what I could have expected. It's actually way beyond what I expected. I thought, oh, it's a tiny village outside of Edinburgh. I mean, we've seen the castle and all that stuff. How great can it be? And guys, it's great. It's great. And it's, it's planted in the middle of this amazing landscape of like a big valley behind us there, which you can see. And, and this church is just amazing and we haven't even been inside yet. Like it's so intricate, it's so artistic, it's so decorative. It's like a Gothic style church, um, chapel. And right now it's in, in private owning, in private hands of the Earl of, of kind of the, this area or whatever. I don't know the politics, how it works, but it's in the private hands, but it's also part of a charity that obviously works day and night to preserve and keep this place going so that it's here for the future generations to see because it really is something to marvel like and the, the view from here like all the greenery we're here it's may and even though the weather may not be the most summery like i mean look at this area look at this whole view it's absolutely amazing and it is just so surreal to think that this building here is like almost a thousand years older than I am like it's absolutely amazing absolutely amazing I am still so curious what we'll see inside hello pizza delivery You need a big key. Look at the big keyhole, man. The massive. Massive. Oh, whoa, you can see people inside. <laughs> oh, that's like spying. So this door is the appropriate door for me to knock on because, believe it or not, I am a female. <laughs> This door was meant for girls, ladies to enter through and there was a separate entrance for men and for hundreds of years this place was divided where women had to worship separately and men separately just kind of similar to how maybe Muslims and stuff worship now where you still have a separate place in the temple for men 
and women so that's interesting so this was the female door here Again, guys, we're not allowed to do some any filming photography in this place inside, but you know, we'll try our best before we get kicked out and see what we can do. So as you can see, in the end, we were allowed to uh, use our own discretion when it came to filming inside, which is great news as we managed to get this incredible footage. And right now you're looking at the beautiful ornate ceiling, which kind of matches up with the expectation that, you know, the roof and the exterior created from the outside. It certainly is really impressive. You know, the stained glass windows you can see here. And the next cool thing is you can use this little leaflet you receive as you get in to find all the little gems and sculptures hidden in between all this artistry as you keep moving along. Like this green man, the little face on top of the pillar. And there's more of him as you keep walking further along, um, as well as other sculptures. It really is difficult to put into words how impressive and intricate and detailed this place really is. As you can see at first your eyes get a bit freaked out by the sheer amount of the things that you see you don't know where to look but that's why it's so worth to spend a bit of time of trying to decipher all these symbols so here you can see the mason's pillar one of the more interesting parts of the church built by the main mason that was in charge of building the chapel now here on the other hand you're looking at the apprentice pillar now the story goes that the mason was not entirely happy with his own pillar so he went around Europe seeking inspiration to create another better masterpiece. But he got very upset when he came back to see that his lowly apprentice had completed that task with great, great talent and glory. And as you can see, that pillar is a thing of extreme beauty. So he struck him on the head with his hammer, um, killing him and in turn himself receiving a death sentence and being hanged. Is this story true? We don't know. It is a popular story in many European churches, but it certainly makes the thing very interesting. So after admiring the beautiful pillars for a little while, especially this apprentice pillar, we decided to head downstairs to the part of the church that some people refer to as the crypts or the dungeons perhaps, which was the backdrop of the famous scene from the Da Vinci Code movie um, that included Tom Hanks. So guys, we are now in the Rosalind Chapel, down in the crypts, and this exactly is where Tom Hanks um, came to record the Da Vinci Code, and you know, let's not make it shallow, it's not all about Tom Hanks, but he's cool. Anyway, this place is cooler than anything, like honestly, it's just so detailed and so intricate. Like usually when you go to places that are medieval, you barely get any detail there, but there's just so much here to look closely and see. Um, it's kind of creepy, but amazing. And it's cool that Tom Hanks came here for his filming, but I don't really care about that. I just think this is such a cool place to come see. So if you're ever in Scotland, um, this is a place to come see. So many people say, why does this room, this uh, crypt look different? Because this is basically the crypt there behind me. This look different than what it was in the movie. The movie was mostly shot in a different room. Uh, but this place is, is amazing. And we are here alone right now. There aren't that many people because it's midweek and it does feel like you're in a movie and there is a mystery to be solved. So it is really amazing. Like, is that supposed to be here? Was that here when they made it or? They have the weird symbols here. I don't know what that means, pentagram, but. So allegedly the pamphlet informs that these sketches may have been something that the stonemasons sketched when they were constructing this place and stuff. But we find it hard to believe because these little stars and look, there's another one here somewhere. It's like a weird symbol. 
things that don't seem to in any way correspond to architecture, but what do I know? Look, okay, there's another star here, see? So we decided to head back uh, upstairs to have one last close look at the top part of the chapel and especially the ceiling, um, all the beautiful ornaments. And it's important to have a closer look at what they mean and what they symbolize. Now, one interesting fact is that there are certain flowers and plants that uh, form the decorations that weren't very famous or popular or even known in Europe at that time. So that is a bit of a mystery. And there are so many symbols like dragons and the green man himself, which you should read a little bit more about if you're interested. But they all marry sort of Christendom with paganism and all these kind of beliefs marry together. So after spending quite an exciting hour inside, admiring all the beautiful sculptures and decorations, uh, we decided to head out and see if we can find the ruins of the castle. So we've left the chapel in full of awe and we haven't had enough yet so we just want to discover and have a look at the Roslyn Castle which is supposedly just a stone's throw away so let's have a little look. The path doesn't look too convincing but... I just keep going straight. There's a link in here. Okay, great. You may all know. I don't know. I don't see any castle. Where are we going? Okay. Are you? Where is this castle exactly? Oh shit! It's very slippery, man. We are lost. We are Blair Witch Project, bitch. Full time. Uh, my lovely navigator here has uh, got us lost and my shoes fucked up and he slipped and almost died but it's all fine you know it's not the amazon it's the suburbs of edinburgh <laughs> it shows you how t advanced of a trekker i am um but yeah we will just uh, find this castle no matter what okay How cool is this? There's a wall and they built it all around this tree trunk, yeah? The, the tree sort of root and trunk. So this tree must be pretty damn old, right? How old can it be? How old is this castle? It's like six, seven hundred years old, five? Well, I'm sure it's as old as the church-ish. It's a castle, I don't know. So back then, people were kind enough to trees to think we're gonna build build this around you, man. It's pretty cool. Even nowadays, people just cut the tree down and build on top of it, rather than make the wall around it. So that's pretty cute. But there's a gate there. Can we even like get in? Is this the castle? I love it. It was worth getting here. It's so scary. Look how high it is, man. Okay, maybe there is no proof. Maybe the Grail is lost forever. So we're finally at the castle. We made it without any broken limbs, uh, minus a lens perhaps, which we may have lost. But um, it's absolutely stunning, like the view, because the, this um, wall is so low and it's actually like a huge drop, so it's quite stunning. The greenery, as you can see, is astonishing. And these ruins, well, they just look really cool, don't they? I don't know really anything about this castle, but it's just really cool. And it was one of the main places of action, of worship, beside the chapel we've just been to, in Roslyn here, that belonged to, I assume, the family, uh, what was their name again? Sinclair? I oh, Sinclair, yeah. So there we go, There, here we are. I don't know if there's that much to see. We'll find out in just a minute and we'll check it out. So this looks like, this is the ruins of the castle here. Not that much remaining, I suppose. Just this one wall here and this one. And then right here is a house, which looks like it may be either a house of the owners of this or someone who takes care of it. But that's it. So we made it here. It's cold as hell. It's worth it. It's not as um, big as I hoped, but it's quite cool because it's very, very old. And 
and I think it's quite impressive to see this at this time of the year when everything is so amazingly green. Yeah, so it appears the house is actually part of this castle complex. And there's more here. We just came outside on the other side. It's pretty interesting. But you can't go around this way. This was the absolute icing on the cake of our trip. Meet William the cat. He's 17 years old and he's the chapel mascot. Apparently ever since he moved in here as a kitten, he has never really left. He loves spending his days basking in the sunshine, taking little naps and greeting people as they come in. So if you ever get a chance, uh, go say hello to William, but be nice, gentle and respectful. There is a little story that goes that he's actually a member of a long line of cats that inhabited the chapel and guarded it from mice infestations. The cool thing is that you can support the charity that runs the chapel by buying one of the William inspired souvenirs such as a cuddly toy or a children's book that tells his story. Unfortunately, it was time to say goodbye to William and head for a little whiskey before boarding the bus home. This really turned out to be a fabulous day trip, exceeded all my expectations. And it's very easily accessible and quick from the Edinburgh city center. So if you're ever visiting or if you're local and fancy a trip, um, I highly, highly recommend it. Check it out.